Hello, everybody. Uh, I wasn't entirely sure if Matt was going to say something to me, but hi, and uh, welcome to my talk about my career journey. Um, apparently, there is a dedicated Slack channel for this uh, for for this particular talk. Um, it's hashtag. Uh, session dash my dash career journey blah blah blah. Um, I won't be able to see it right now, but after my session, I'll be hanging out there if you have any additional questions. All right, let's get this show on the road. So, um, this is uh, the agenda for the next thirty-ish minutes. Uh, first, I'm going to be introducing myself a little bit better. Then, I'm going to be talking to you about why I'm doing this talk. Then, a little bit about my history, present, and future, and then I'll be wrapping it up with some key takeaways. All right, so let's uh, get to know me a little better. <laughs> All right, so my name is Dominique Top. I'm a solutions engineer at HashiCorp. I organize uh, meetups and conferences like Docker London, DevOps Days London, DevSecOps Days London, go to loads of meetups and conferences, as you can tell. Um, in the before times, I used to go to like three or so meetups a week. Uh, I sing, I'm a techno DJ, I produce music, I have ADHD. I like video games, I like anime, I like sci-fi. Uh, I think Bola said something about Star Trek. Yes, I'm also a Trekkie, good. <laughs> um, you can follow me on Twitter. I think my, um, yeah, my, my, is my, um, yeah, my handle should be up there somewhere. Otherwise it's at DevOps Dummy. You can follow me there, chat, chat to me, whatever you want, but that's me, basically an all around nerd. So, <laughs> um, so, why am I talking about this at a DevOps conference? So we can have a long, long discussion on what DevOps and being in it means. And I think the previous three people have very much like done a lot of talking about that. But for the for clarification, this is what I believe DevOps is. It's the full development and operations lifecycle. Are we doing still? Are we still? Are we still doing lifecycle <laughs> of business critical software? The infrastructure runs on and the mindset, methodologies, and processes applied to it by the people who build, run, and maintain it. So long, you know, it's basically what um, Mr. Beta told us earlier. DevOps is more than just a job title, in my opinion. So you miss 100% of the shots you do not take. Usually, I don't really like sports quotes, but this is definitely a point I'm trying to bring home with everybody today. Um, the internet wasn't quite sure if Wayne Gretzky was actually the first person to say this, but apparently it was the first recorded instance I could find, so that's good enough for me. One of the reasons I wanted to do this talk today is imposter syndrome. I won't go into the psychology of it too much. You can feel free to look up this paper um, if you're interested. I've got the source there. I will share the slides afterwards so you can look it up in your own time. I didn't have, I, f I always felt like I didn't have the right background for career in technology or that people would always judge me for my job title or that my lack of skills or everybody else is always smarter than me or it would take way too long to get anywhere close to where all my friends are, you know, like all of my techie friends are on like cool jobs and everything. Basically, I let my inner saboteur take over. And ever since I started this journey, my imposter syndrome has become increasingly worse. <laughs> So, but what I did notice, however, is that everyone I've met who's either in DevOps right now or is aspiring to be all suffer from it too. Basically, what I'm trying to say is if I can do it, you can too. So if you are listening today, if you're watching today, if anybody feels anything of what I just described, please know everybody else feels the same and you can do it too. And I believe in you. So now we're going a bit into the history part of my journey. This will be a very, very, very short version. I've talked about this many times with people in the in the pub over a drink or um, yeah, this this is a bulky bit and it's, I'm trying to make it as concise as possible. Um, but as I said, feel free to reach out afterwards if you, uh, if you wanna know more about this. This quote has been with me since I graduated in 2011. Brian's dad, Brian is uh, one of my classmates, on my graduation day, he said to me, your 20s should be about exploring who you are. You have enough time to settle on a career path from your 30s onwards, 30s onwards. Do not stay in the same role for more than five years. So this has been the driving force behind most of my decisions. There's been very much a lot of people go like, oh, well, I've been studying for this for a long time and I'm doing the same job and like going into the same thing. Basically, what he taught me is that if you do not learn anything about 
anything anymore in a certain role, you've plateaued, it's time to move on. So that's kind of what I've, uh, what I've been doing. And I will show you a bit more about that in a minute. So a short history of nearly everything. In 2011, I graduated the Dutch Pop Academy as a singer and a sound engineer. I was in a band. I did about 50 shows a year. I have an album on Spotify. I've got a couple of music videos on YouTube. I have always wanted to travel the world and share my story on stage with music. But afterwards, you know, like I, I needed to pay the bills. And as you may or may not know, music doesn't particularly pay very well. <laughs> There's a big gap between uh, having the musical talent and actually making money with said talent. So at some point I had graduated and I was like, I need to do something with my life. I need to pay the bills. I'm going to get a job. So my other technology, my other passion, uh, you know, music was one of them, is still one of them. Technology has always been a passion of mine as well. So me and my dad, um, we used to like, um, you know, mess around with like late, like the computer. We were like one of the first people with a computer in the house and uh, we had the internet and like Morpheus and like downloaded music and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I had a little lucrative side hustle at school where, um, uh, where, where I burned CDs for people and download, they gave me a little note with like, I want these 10 songs and I'd like sell them a, a burned CD, but let's not talk about that because that was a long time ago. But yeah, basically me and my father were pretty much gadget freaks. So I started working for an Apple premium reseller in my hometown. It's the only other shop, that I, the only actual place where I felt like, okay, well, if I'm going to do something, then that's probably the next best thing. So yeah, so basically I was talking tech, tech all day. Like I was speaking to people like, hey, talking about computers, learn everything there was about, you know, everything that I could about Apple at the time. Um, even uh, when I bought my first MacBook, I, um, with the assistance of my, you know, with the people looking over my shoulder, like upgraded my own machines and everything. It was just a really exciting time. But then after five years, that was the magic mark. I was like, you know what? I'm going to take the advice of Brian's dad. I'm going to move on. So I was like, what can I do that, enables me to give a career like get a career path somewhere i like technology what am i going to do all right so i can't you know i was working in in consumer electronics i was selling stuff to people so do i have any transferable skills right now that i can take into a job that will set me up for something later down the line so i made a profile on linkedin some uh recruiter contacted me saying like hey I might have an interesting job for you. I'm fairly certain that people will watch me today who we'll have all had a conversation with a recruiter like that at some point. But I was recruited for an IT recruitment job. And actually, it was not just an IT recruitment job. I didn't know what recruitment was, as I said. So I was like, what is it? What does IT recruitment do? So, like, well, yeah, it's basically you've got uh, some companies, you've got some engineers, some candidates, and you have to basically try to find them together. So I said, like, so are you actually saying that I can still talk about tech all day and help people? Yeah, 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 you can say that. <laughs> so needless to say, I was like, yeah, count me in, sign me up, I'll be here, and I did the job. And it was interesting, um, you know, like I, I was allowed, um, my manager was like, this is DevOps contracts, this is now your vertical, and I was like, oh, cool, can you tell me what, what it is? And they're like, no. But we've heard my, many people talk about it. So if you uh, <laughs> just go, go ahead and go find out yourself. So did engine as I was before my first day, I was looking online, going on Google, what is DevOps and trying to figure out things. And I'm fairly certain I've seen loads of different like books and stuff and different definitions. Because this is like, what, uh, five years ago? Is it five years ago? Something like that, six years ago? And in, it was, you know, it was... <laughs> And it was a lot there. I couldn't figure out what it, you know, like from somebody who doesn't have any experience in that field whatsoever. It was a lot. Like if if we look at the talks that we just saw from uh, from um, from Emily and Bola and um, Mr. Beta, it's kind of like it, there's there's so much to talk about. And from somebody who didn't know anything about it, it was like, okay, well, how am I going to get this information? So spoke to a bunch of engineers. Like, hey, this is my first day on the job. Tell me what DevOps is. I can hear you think already, like, oh my God, kind of worms. Yes, it was a kind of worms, but also I got 20, 30-ish different definitions. Basically every conversation I had, somebody else had something weird to say. And bear in mind, this was just about like four or five years into the whole DevOps movement. And, you know, it was really interesting and it piqued my interest as that much. It's like, okay, well, there's a lot. It's just not one technology. This is a whole philosophy. People do, like, there's so many different, methods and things and like different technologies and i thought it was super interesting so 
what I did is I started talking to loads of people and like invited them for, for, for lunch and everything. And engineers and like picking their brains, like how does this technology work with this technology and why would you do this and this? And, you know, at some point, like, um, um, you know, learning about different, um, what, what, what constitutes a pipeline? Why would people want to containerize things? And all these things I found immensely interesting, but so much so that all of my colleagues in, the, you know, in my dive recruitment company, <clears throat> they were all like, oh, you are probably, uh, you, everybody knows that you are the person to ask things for um, if there's anything DevOps related. And I have never considered myself an expert and I don't think I am still to this day. But for some reason, everybody in my company thought I was. Um, and I was like, well, if you want to really know what is up, then you should talk to the people that you speak to every day, not talk to me. Like I'm, you know, one of those imposter syndrome things. Like um, don't trust my own knowledge that I've magically acquired over the past uh, period. So where was I with my story? Yeah, so basically at some point I was like, you know what, I feel like I'm more connected to the people that I speak to than like than the people that I work with. Like I felt like that was kind of what like introduced me to the wonders of what DevOps is. And and, and I felt like I wanted to do whatever they did. Like I wanted to, um, was I already in this? Yes, I was in this. Yeah, so kind of that was kind of what I wanted to do. So uh, at some point I moved to London. That was in 2000 and... Actually, I started doing DevOps recruitment in 2016. I moved to the UK in 2016. I was from the Netherlands, moved to here. Um, yeah, so what I wanted to do was like, I wanted to know more. So I went to loads of meetups when I moved to London. I went to the Kubernetes meetup, went to the D London DevOps meetup, uh, DevOps Exchange, um, Docker meetup, I went to Cloud Native London, microservices, li literally every single meetup in London that had any sort of DevOps uh, like adjacent topic, I was there because I, A, didn't know anyone when I moved here, and B, I liked the technology, so I wanted to learn more about it. But the thing was, because I was a recruiter, and recruiters don't have really got a bad, kind of got a bad rep um, in uh, in the industry, I didn't really talk about my job when I was there. So rather than like going out and everybody and like still asking the same questions, like, oh, tell me more. And I learned so much <laughs> during that first year when I moved here. It was great. Like it was you know, I started like recognizing people started recognizing me because th it's not very often that there's like a bespectacled ginger lady uh, just walking around at, <laughs> at meetups, which is another issue in itself. Let's not talk about diversity today, but it's uh, it was you know how I met a lot of people that I still speak to. Like um, one of my friends at some point said he was organizing the Docker meetup. He said, like, I don't have time for this anymore. Would you like to be the DevOps? Uh, would you like to be the um, community leader for the Docker, uh, for the Docker chapter in London? And I was like, yeah, sure. That sounds cool. So when I did that, I started doing loads and loads more. And the company I worked for at the time, like I stopped doing the recruitment side of things and I became a community advocate for that company. So what that meant is that the stuff that I was already doing anyway, going to loads of meetups, now all of a sudden was part of my job. <laughs> so rather than be, you know, having to make time to study for stuff, I have seen so, so, so many conference talks and meetups and, and, and it was amazing. It was a great period. Like I, 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 you know, seen so many really interesting talks, not always understanding everything, but then having the opportunity to talk about it afterwards and like getting information from everybody. It was amazing. Up until a moment, I was at, uh, where did I go? Some point I went to KubeCon in Barcelona, I think it was a couple of years ago. And then I saw so many people on stage that, you know, like, um, People, people like Liz Rice, people like Hannah Foxwell. She'll be talking later on as well. But like people that I really admired from 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 the from the community perspective, people that are I consider them at the time, and I still do consider them rock stars. You know, and <laughs> and I was walking around there. Everybody was wearing the same T-shirt, had like a badge on, and and I just felt like it was like a really big music festival, and I really really enjoyed that. And the moment I noticed that. I already found the next thing I wanted to do because <laughs> I was like, at some point a couple of years ago when I needed to pay the bills for my music career, like going from a music career to an actual other type of career, I kind of put my musical ambitions or like ambition of traveling the world and going places and sharing my story, I kind of put that on the sideline. But seeing all these people standing there, I was like, I can still do this, actually. Like, if, if it's just for me to, about performing and going on stage and talking about stuff, I can still do that. So 
um, I joined a health startup in London. It's kind of a startup. I joined a health company um, and sort of, yeah, as a developer relations and community manager. It was a short stint. It was interesting. And I uh, <laughs> learned a lot there. But uh, then, you know, there was this uh, creepy little thing called COVID that hit and uh, that turned everything upside down a little bit. Not going into it too much, but what it did mean is that the people that I uh, were in touch with, was in touch with over that period, was the uh, director of solutions engineering at HashiCorp, which also a dear friend of mine met at a at a meetup years ago, stayed in touch. And um, yeah, basically when I was talking like, hey, uh, I might be looking for something new. He was like, I've got headcount. I really want to hire you. Please come join my company. And I was like, yeah, okay, cool. So what a, one thing to add here is that I have always had, you know, HashiCorp for me was kind of the, the golden egg, or kind of like my North Star. And when I went from recruitment to developer relations, that was kind of my way of stepping into tech first, you know, and then like learning more. And that, that was kind of my perceived past. Like I'm going to do this first, learning more things, doing more technical stuff, and then maybe work for HashiCorp at some point. One of the things that I always like saying is that one of the um, engineers that I spoke to when I was back in my recruitment days, still back in the Netherlands, was always saying like, you should remember the name HashiCorp Vault. It's a very smart product. <laughs> I, in fact, did remember the name and I carried it on with me. And actually, when I did start working for Ashikorp, I messaged him like, hey, do you remember when I talked to me, you talked to me about this? And he's like, no. <laughs> I still talk about this very often and I really hope he doesn't mind. But, um, but yeah, it was important for me. Like it's it's it was a very important step. It took it, the, the timeline was put forward. But the thing is, like the I got the opportunity to grow like um HashiCorp at the moment, like I'm getting a lot of, like, especially for somebody who suffers from imposter syndrome massively, right? The reason why I got hired, or the reason why I'm doing this job is that a lot of the transferable skills that I've been gathering over the last couple of years uh, as, um, it, you know, at the Apple Premium Reseller, as a musician, um, in recruitment, really, um, doing the meetups, all of this stuff, talking to lots of people is kind of you know, it's the foundation for what I'm doing today. I still have the same conversations just earlier on in the process. Um, but the difference is that I get to like actually try all the things myself and like play around with the technology rather than having to find uh, somebody with Terraform experience. Um, yeah. Let's not talk about recruitment too much, but let's just <laughs> let's say I'm just happy to be at HashiCorp. So also, now I'm going to talk about it later. Okay, so. Where do I go from here? I have great respect for the past. If you do not know where you come from, you don't know where you're going. Quote from Maya Angelou. I think this is very uh, apt for now for me. I really used to be ashamed to say that I was a recruiter. Some, I was a recruiter. I still sometimes do. It comes with a bad reputation. It comes with bad vibes. But, you know, all of the stuff that I've done so far... Also, you know, inspired by what Brian's dad once told me back in 2011, it, it's, you know, I've got to respect all of what I've learned and where it's got me today. And yeah, so let's, with that, let's take a little look at what we're doing, what I'm doing now, my future. So it's not much, but it's something. <laughs> I always believe that those without personal, without experience do personal projects. Um, as I said, yeah, everybody has to start somewhere. At the moment, I'm doing something called the Cloud Resume Challenge. Um, in the, uh, you know, like I have a busy job, but like every time I have some time free and I'm uh, in, my, in the right headspace for it, I'm working on that. The reason why I like it is that um, everybody always says like, oh, you should do a personal project. That's easy. You just find something you want to solve. And then you just go do it. And it, it, that comes with a lot of, you know, where do you start? <laughs> what, what would you do? Like, I thought like, oh, I started on a website years ago and that's not very good, but it's there and I'm still proud of it. I've um, got a bunch of domains and everything, but yeah, like what kind of project can you do? Like there's just so many options that because there's so many options, it's very difficult to actually, you know, figure out what it is that you want to do. So I'm doing that and it's uh, it's going and there's a whole Discord server. I highly recommend it. I don't remember the guy's name who built it, but it's a very interesting story. Um, but yeah, like it's it's some people who have not got any experience with, with cloud and devils whatsoever 
have done that and now have a job in this field, but also people who have got somewhat experience in, in like a couple of years in or um, just experience in some some smart part, um, small part of the industry. It, it's it is interesting because it has a it gives you a guide. It doesn't tell you what to do. It does require you to still do on your own research, do whatever you want, but it gives you a framework of what to do and not even in what order, but you know, you can still use that as a guide. So I'm doing that, or at least I'm trying to. Um, second of all, those without experience get certified. So last year I've been trying to get um, a Linux exam uh, over, over the line. I've got trying to get certified for that. I have done the uh, Linux Foundations of Syst Linux Essentials of System Administration, something from Linux Foundation. Um, it was hard. Yeah, it was like uh, 25 tasks. And uh, and I don't do online exams very well. I'm not sure if anybody has, but there's always somebody watching and you can't touch your face. You can't say stuff out loud. So the first time I got a horrendous score. Uh, because I also had like call support and whatever. It's ADHD brain drifting off. <laughs> it wasn't great. So the second time I do, I did it, <clears throat> you know, like did the whole, uh, like try to study some more, study some more. Two weeks I had to do the reset. And then when I did the reset, I did double my score, but I still didn't pass. So I have a certificate of completion. It's not quite the same, but I am not giving up. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm not sure if I'm going to do the same exam again now or do something else in the meantime, get some actual other kind of experience, you know, just, it's all about experience. Um, but yeah, so I'm not giving up. I'm maybe doing some other certifications soon. Uh, and then the lastly is something that I think is really important. Learn from each other and lift each other up. So one thing that I've been starting at, uh, at HashiCorp is an initiative called WISE. Um, it is something that's like accepted in a wider community, but basically it is uh, women, non-binary and margin marginalized genders in solutions engineering at HashiCorp. Now, I will know what you can, you, I hear you think like, Man, it's not really the type of acronym that you want, but WISE just sounds really cool. And we do want to be inclusive of, you know, other marginalized folks. So that's why we call it that. It's not an ERG. It's not, it's more kind of like a special interest group, but basically it's just people with the same background as me or similar experiences, just the ability to just lift each other up and like help each other t learn stuff. So, um, so I think that's really cool. Oh, um, side note, it's always from a hiring perspective is always difficult. Um, everybody always wants seniors, but HashiCorp is trying to, um, you know, hire from a more, I guess, diverse uh, pool. So if, if anybody's interested, this is the obligatory we're hiring part, feel free to reach out and I'll get you in touch with the right people. Um, but yeah, so that's something that we do, uh, something that I'm really passionate about to make sure everybody gets the right opportunities. Again, not making this into an inclusivity and diversity uh, talk, but <laughs> still kind of where, uh, where I am. Uh, and then, yeah, so I did promise you that I would give you a slide with some takeaways. So uh, here they are. And I think I'm rushing through everything because it looks like I've got like six minutes left or something, but it's fine. Um, so what do I do with all this? You know, like what, if there's one thing that I can tell you, just do it. I'm not going to do all of the, uh, well, maybe I just do it. Just go for it. Like it, it's your, your own worst enemy. I have it. I'm, you know, I'm still, I'm not perfect. I'm not saying that I am. I'm, I'm not saying that everybody should follow my example, but if I were to give you advice, then this is it. So it's very easy to like go into a mindset of like, oh, we'll do it tomorrow or oh, in a couple of weeks, I've got a little bit more time or oh, I've got, well, mm. there's always reasons for something not to happen. Like if you need an accountability, call me or just message me. I'll be happy to be it for you. But it just, you have to start. Doesn't matter where everybody's new at some point, just go and do it. Second thing that I want you to worry about, what I want you to take away from this is worry about your own journey. It is very, very easy to wrap your head around like, oh my God, but this person started the same day as me and they're already ahead or this person's doing this and I should be able to do that too. I was there. I still do it. I still think about like, oh, wow, um, you know, this person's the same age as me and has a huge company or this person's doing this and this is way smarter than me. Worry about your own journey. They worry about theirs. I can guarantee you, I said it before, imposter syndrome is real. Everybody deals with it. Everybody will have the same feeling. So if everybody just worries about themselves, we're good. And second, the third thing I want you to realize is, or want you to take away from this is set realistic goals and work towards them. 
at some point, like I kind of know, six months ago, I was like, oh, I'm going to do this and this and this. I'm going to build like a whole while. I was just going overboard with all of it. I wanted to do everything and I wanted to do everything now, instant gratification. And I got very annoyed with myself if I didn't get it right away. And that's also very real, right? Especially like um, the current vibe, everybody is very hung up on if I can't do it right, if I can't do it right now, then I'm not going to do it. So it's, yeah, like, oh, I'll never be able to do it. And it's 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 very dramatic, but people do do that. So set realistic goals, try to like work towards them. Again, if you need an accountability buddy, I'll be here for you. Uh, I have limited time, but <laughs> I'll do what I can. Next thing that I want you to take away from this is do not expect any miracles. I'm very aware of my own limitations. I'm I'm looking at my boundaries, but I'm also very much I'm seeking out my, I'm looking to expand my uh, comfort zone, but I'm also not expecting to know everything that my friends who've done this for absolute ages, you know, I'm not expecting myself to know everything that they do within a month. It's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. These people have done all of the years, all of the years, but you should be able to give yourself some slack because you don't need to know everything that everybody else does. Otherwise, how are you going to have diversity in your teams? Ask other people for help, you know? And that's the next point. Do not be afraid to ask for help. There's always somebody smarter than me. There's always somebody who's got more experience in something than somebody else. If you all come together and just ask for help, you know, don't expect other people to do the work for you but say like look i've done this this and this can't figure it out i know you're the expert what would you do in my situation that's fine there's strength and vulnerability it's fine to be just uh you know just go say like i can't do this you know it's 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 not bad it's not it's it's i encourage you to ask for help the right way it's it's in, it's enlightening, I can tell you that much. And then lastly, and I'm very certain that most people in the DevOps space have heard this before, fail fast and fail often. It's not just DevOps. It's not just platform engineering. It's not just everything around us. It's all you as well. I failed. I, had, I told you about my Linux exam that I failed. And I failed loads of stuff all the time. But, you know, it's it's it takes a special kind of skill to pick yourself up again and then go ahead again. And but the thing is, don't forget to learn about it as well. Like if you feel about something, if you if you do not if you if something didn't work, just analyze it. Like why didn't it work? Why why would it? What would I have done better? Like do a little post mortem with yourself, or like if you need somebody to talk about it, there's loads of communities that can help you do this. So yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. So with uh, two minutes and twenty seconds on the clock, <laughs> I want to thank everybody for listening. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I said it again already, add me on LinkedIn. I'm here. Um, you know, if, yeah, I will hang out on the um, uh, the dedicated session channel afterwards if anybody has any questions. So, yeah, have a lovely day. And I will be seeing you later at one of the panels in a few hours.